Welcome to the European Parliament. Every time it's meeting here in the capital of the Europeans, Strasbourg, there is a session um, by the Intergroup for Animal Welfare going on. Every Thursday they meet when the Parliament is here. And the Intergroup is um, composed by parliamentarians from all countries, from all political groups. But uh, does it have power? I will mention one example of where there is a lack of power and where the situation is a catastrophe. That's Romania, the brutal killing of dogs in Romania. For more than a year we know by visits of parliamentarians from here how bad it is. Carmen, you are the president of the uh, Romanian um, Association for Animal Welfare. You've been invited here to tell the parliamentarians how bad it is. Could you, in a few words, describe the present situation? Uh, the situation is very bad. Actually, you cannot describe in uh, words. Um, you can see. You have to see the situation. It's um, a cruel situation everywhere, in the street, during the catching and transporting the dogs, and in the public shelters of the city halls where the animals starve to death or uh, they uh, do not receive um, at least water. They don't receive anything. No medical care, uh, no observation from uh, any point of view. Uh, this situation, unfortunately, is uh, for a long time, for uh, about 20 years, and the uh, most uh, gravely situation is uh, since uh, 2001, when uh, the killing program has started. Uh, even there are some um, provisions uh, with uh, that uh, state is that uh, we have to respect the animal rights and they are defined in the law very clear. Nothing is uh, respected actually. On the other hand, I would um, underline that um, there is a huge discrepancy between the situation from the public shelters of the city halls and the budgets allocated for uh, the management of uh, the stray dogs that are really huge. Uh, so uh, it is a difference between the reality uh, behind the fences of the shelters and uh, the uh, budget spent effectively by the uh, municipalities for the stray dog management. I have learned that there are cities in Romania where there is no problem. How comes? Uh, there are only small cities where uh, there is not a problem, uh, and Cluj this is, is, an, is a city where I've been told that the former prime minister of Romania, Emil uh, Brock, has um, the situation under control. Yeah, because uh, they uh, implemented uh, actually the only solution for uh, solving the stray uh, dog problem, uh, meaning the water vaccinate and return program. Uh, we can give and adoption um, and uh, parallel with uh, education program um, education program in schools uh, there are some places like Oradea, like Lugos, like Cernavoda, like Sibiu, Cluj um, where uh, the situation is much, be it's, uh, much better because um, uh, because uh, they uh, run uh, these uh, kind of uh, programs. It's interesting that you're mentioning Sipiu, because that's a city where the new um, president of uh, Romania, Klaus Ioannis, was mayor. Yeah. Uh, have you heard positive reactions uh, on the uh, stray dog problems from him? No. We uh, had positive reaction on the time when he was mayor. He did not agree with uh, mass killing of dogs. He says the only uh, solution for uh, solving this problem is uh, neutering dogs and returning in the street. We are speaking, when we say return, we are speaking only about the dogs who are not, of course, aggressive, who are healthy. Um, but after he was elected, uh, we did not hear any positive reaction at um, our calls and uh, especially of, um, uh, of the calls of uh, European citizens. I've invited two more guests here. Marlene, could you please present yourself? 
Well, I'm Marlene Wartenberg. I'm working in the animal welfare field as a lawyer since 12 years. And I built up the European Policy Office of HOPOS uh, seven years ago. And we focused completely on companion animals because it, it was not discussed on the European, European level before. You have a hard job in Romania. That's true. Yeah, I have been several times there. I just can underline what Carmen is saying. But how can you contribute to a solution? Well, my work was to work on the European uh, level as a lobbyist. That means to give suggestions and consultancy what the different EU institutions can do. Good. Since you're representing one of the largest um, NGOs on animal welfare, could you present yourself and the organization? Sure. Um, I'm the uh, director of Europe for World Animal Protection, which is a, a global uh, animal protection organization. And um, yes, we, we have our activities too in Romania. And how are you working there? What we try to do is um, uh, start uh, a bottom-up approach and a top-down approach at the same time. So by engaging with the national authorities, which is complicated, I must admit that, um, and at the same time working with uh, a few uh, local municipalities on getting a responsible, humane and sustainable uh, way of managing a dark population to get that implemented. By the combination of the two, we hope that uh, things will move in the right direction. I suppose you are not uh, in a position where you can allow yourself to talk about corruption. So I will uh, talk about corruption and ask you, do you think that will ever stop? Well, I, I think um, if, if you look at uh, the number of people in jail in Romania at the moment, government officials um, who have been involved, all, all levels uh, accused of a corruption, uh, accusations uh, at the highest level in, in the national government. Which is the Prime Minister Ponta. Yes, and uh, the Mayor of Bucharest. and uh, so, so there are all kinds of accusations. So you could also say that the country is trying to clean the mess up. Um, how comes that the mess is still there when you say that there is an awareness? Because I've learned that even the uh, the press is aware of and is talking about what's going on. How comes that nothing is really happening? On what? On the cruel, uh, brutal um, way of killing dogs and the corruption. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, it's, um, it, it is a very complicated situation and without any doubt, uh, corruption plays a role in that, yes. Um, but what, what I, we would like to emphasize always is that um, there, is, there are some positive things going on as well. Um, and let's, let's find those and make them bigger, Best uh, showcase them to others, inspire others by, by doing that. I'm not saying that it, that, that will be enough I think some pressure coming out of Brussels will definitely help uh, to, to get that going. But it, it's, not, uh, it's not all bad and it's not good, I think, to condemn um, a, a country and a whole people. It's, it's not good. Well, it, being a lawyer, have you scrutinized the law of Romania? For instance, the um, part where you see violations of what I expect should be uh, prohibited by law when people um, having a companion animal, a dog at home, um, realize that their home is entered by these criminals, the dog is taken away from them and killed in front of them. Yes, I just can tell you that we have over, we in the moment as four paws in Romania, we have done more than 30 legal actions and they are still ongoing. In which way have you done this? Have you prosecuted? Are yes. you asking for yes. prosecution? Yes, suit, yeah. And what were the worst cases? The one I mentioned, for instance, mm -hmm. but what, what are you focusing on? 
I think the worst case would be to have a negative uh, court decision, but I think uh, in, its, in the last year or two years, maybe uh, the, the judges will not dare anymore to make so clear decisions against the will of the people and also against the will of the European citizens. Because this is very clear. We have, I have heard from the cabinet that 80% of the letters are protests against the Romanian situation. So I think there are, there is a, a consciousness, but the acting persons in the public uh, administration who are linked to the stray dogs, they are the problem for the moment, for the enforcement. Carmen, the health situation has been mentioned as a possible way to uh, come forward in this. Um, the rap is, uh, the problem has been uh, mentioned. But to me it seems even more brutal the mental situation in which the Romanians are from all ages, from the childhood until elderly people um, who are watching what's going on. It is very known that uh, abuses against animals uh, produce uh, mental disorders um, in um, human, in human uh, beings. And we have, uh, in this respect, uh, many cases that arrive at uh, our organizations, uh, like complaints. Um, after, uh, for example, when uh, the killing program has started in 2013, we received a lot of messages in this respect. Uh, even uh, people who died uh, because of um, uh, abuses that they saw in the street during that period. Uh, and uh, also we have um, a study, international studies, that uh, was uh, made in uh, Romania in a town uh, that demonstrates that uh, abuse uh, against animals affected a lot the mental of uh, children. It was a study made on uh, children between 14 and 16 years old, and 84% of uh, the uh, children um, are affected, recognize that they are affected by animal abuses that they saw in the street, and um, uh, they saw for many times. In parallel with this study that was done by universities from um, uh, from um, uh, United States, from UK. Uh, it was made in Berlin, a study on um, the same uh, number of uh, children, and uh, only 32% of the children said that they are affected, and they saw these abuses only uh, inside and only once. Uh, so we can see a big difference, and from uh, point of view of uh, physical health, we can say that yes, Romania is under a huge risk of rabies because um, there are some uh, recent uh, um, legislative disposition by what um, the rabies vaccinations uh, can be made only after the dog is microchipped. If rabies vaccination is a program that is um, financed by the government, microchipping has to be uh, paid uh, by the owners. And we are speaking especially about rural areas where uh, uh, there are the most of dogs uh, with owners and where the people uh, do not have financial possibilities. Uh, to, to, to pay, to cheap. So, um, according to the official answer that um, we received uh, at uh, our request, request from uh, National uh, Sanitary Veterinary Authority, um, only one million of dogs in Romania from uh, uh, the own dogs from rural areas are vaccinated against rabies. That means uh, a little more than 20 percent of the dogs uh, with owners. So this is a very huge risk for public health. Ruth, in which way can an organization of that size of um, the uh, um, organization you are representing have an impact on what's going on in one country? Well, as, as I uh, mentioned before, um, we are promoting a, um, um, a top-down and a bottom-up approach. So we're working with municipalities to get DPM 
dog population management yes, implemented. But reaching results, is that at all well, possible? Well, it's, it, there are results, and, and uh, as, as you, you mentioned yourself before, there are, uh, and it's a limited number, I know, but there are cities, there are villages where the situation is under control. Yeah, but can in you a good afford to, to put pressure and put uh, that much attention to one country? Well, obviously, there, there are. Uh, if you look at the world and at the global map, and you you, you look at uh, animal welfare problems, and not only dogs, but but farm animals, uh, animals living exactly. in the wild, wildlife, then yeah, there, there, there's a lot of work to do. But uh, what I'm up to is asking you actually, um, wouldn't it be for your organization more relevant to put pressure in Brussels on, for instance, the EU Commission? Yes, and that, that is what we're doing. Uh, we're also working with uh, an organization like the OIE, uh, where we are an, an official uh, observer. That's the, let's say, the World Health Organization for Animal Health. Um, and um, so uh, we, we have an observer status there, and we are working with them on that regional platform uh, to, to get the, the DPM rolled out in the Balkan countries as a top priority. So, so we are doing things at that level to get it done. Marlene, it, uh, it is not, not our strength, because I, I think that, that was what you, you were asking, it's not our strength to do a lot on the ground work in Romania itself. That is up to local NGOs to do that. But at that level we can make a difference. Marlene, um, again, you're a lawyer. Um, in the neighbor country, Bulgaria, mm -hmm. they are about to set up an, an animal uh, police court. Could anything like that be done in Romania? Yes, this is exactly what I was suggesting, that suggesting what has to be done on the member state level. Because, of course, you can, the EU level is one thing, but it, uh, the, you need the political will of the member state. And if there is a political will, you can do really amazing things, as we see in Bulgaria, that exist on the same time. And uh, we have a very good uh, animal welfare law. Also here with our office, we have been uh, involved. We created uh, a, a systematic birth control program in Bulgaria. We have now uh, uh, this wonderful uh, uh, enforcement tool of the animal welfare police because you know a law is a piece of paper but it has to be made alive that means you need the citizens to understand to be informed and then to follow and uh, I, I'm really very happy about this uh, step and uh, the other thing is um, we have for example a best practice with the municipality of Sofia and we have their um, neutering project a clinic Uh, managed together with uh, really excellent results and can prove that if you do it systematically and you are informing the citizens and you have a good law and a good enforcement, it can work. Carmen, final question to you. Any hope? Yes, we have to hope. Otherwise, we cannot. Um, we do not have why to fight. Yes, we hope, because actually uh, it's normal to go um, to make steps uh, into civilization uh, and uh, to find uh, higher uh, steps, um, higher levels of uh, morality. It's um, actually the normal way, yeah, and it's the correct one. Yeah, I think uh, in spite of all this, um, uh, Romania made some steps. Uh, even um, uh, Romania, it is known Uh, to be uh, the, um, to be the country with the highest and the most abuses against animals, actually it make uh, it made some steps at least theoretically, because we have um, a law, animal protection law, a good one, but unfortunately it is not respected. So the, uh, our problem is uh, actually. Uh, at, uh, in the hand uh, of the um, authorities who are responsible with monitoring uh, and implement uh, the law, stray dog management uh, legislation and also animal protection law, uh, but they don't do it. They are completely inefficient, um, corrupted, 
and uh, they uh, prove that they are uh, they have uh, they are complice with uh, uh, with uh, those um, personnel of, of the city hall who manage the animal shelters. Carmen, I admire your work. Keep fighting. <laughs>